At exactly 8 a.m., as the beautiful sun peeks over the majestic Ozark Mountains, Old Man Radio lies peacefully asleep in his jammies. Cozy, warm, and as the good folks of Lightbelt put down that first cup of morning coffee, we don a new era in broadcast radio. Coming to you live from the flamethrower antenna atop the Flat River chat dump, this ain't your grandpappy's radio station. This dial stops for one station and one morning show only. Brought to you live from Southeast Missouri in the barn studio, here are the boys from The Barn Radio Show. I ain't seven days in an 83. Hi, and welcome to the Barn Radio Show live from the Barn Studio. Got the Mox here with you, Mox in the mornings, courtesy of Dirt Road FM. Also got my co-host, my one and only co-host today. We got Ben out somewhere doing something, but I got Chuck here. Chuck, what's up, my man? What's happening, brother? I'm back. How you been, dude? I'm good. Always good. We have to talk about the last time we recorded an episode. It's been a little bit hit or miss with us here lately. Uh, we apologize for that, uh, but we'll we'll try to make it up to you with some radio dingers today. The last time we recorded, you weren't here. You wanted to be, but you weren't here. Yeah. You had, I guess, maybe some transportation issues. Your car was in the shop, and you were borrowing, borrowing a car, and, and somebody had the car, right? Yes. Yes. And uh, we went live. Like we're doing now, we're live on Facebook right now, <laughs> but we went live on Facebook while we recorded and our, our good friend Bushwhack stepped in to help fill your shoes, although it's not easy. Yeah, could have just came and got me, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like, you know, we record for at least an hour, sometimes longer, and uh, you said you couldn't make it, so we went, we went ahead and started without you. Yeah. And... Yeah. So we record, we go live, we do all that, and then I'm laying in bed, and I was looking back on the live that we did on Facebook just to check the sound levels, make sure it looked okay, and I see, I start getting alerted that it starts getting a lot of comments, and it's from you, (laughs) and you're talking, I guess you didn't recognize that it was live it was a live at one point, but it was not live at that point. I went on Facebook, and it said live. It said it's live. And so I was like, oh, they're live right now. I was like, wait a minute. There's three people walking around there. Somebody can come get me right now. <laughs> and so I'm just texting the town like, hey, come get me. And then I'm, you guys will be saying something towards, like, hey, yeah, but what about this? And I'm like, say that he said that. Like, I'm, I'm telling, <laughs> jo- I'm saying jokes. I'm writing jokes down. I'm like, come on. I was like, come, somebody come get me. Hey, whack, you're not doing anything. Come get me right now, please. Come get me. Yeah, and it wasn't, you guys were asleep already in bed. You guys <laughs> yeah. are all in bed. But here's the weird thing, though. When it's live, like, so if somebody puts chat, high whack or something on the 37th minute of the show, it will show up on the 37th minute. Pop, it'll pop up. But if I if I still comment, even after, if I comment on the 36th minute, mine will show up. And then theirs will show up from the 37th minute with, that they did, like, hours ago. So I'm sitting there thinking it's all live. I'm talking to the per- people that are probably asleep with their kids also. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it's awful. Well, I, can so, see, I can see how that would be confusing. You betcha. Because you. as your comment shows up, somebody else's does, it makes you think that it's happening right then. Yeah, because you guys are talking. You were talking to Ben, and uh, and you no, he called his brother Brian. Yeah. And I was like, I was like hey, Brian. Well, I was to, and, and I was like, Brian, tell Brian I said hi or something like that. And nobody said a word. And then pop. Popped up, his wife goes, uh, Ben's wife goes, hey, Brian. And they go, hey, uh, she said hi, Brian. I'm like, what the, what the <laughs> hell? I just said hi, too. So you thought we were just totally ignoring <laughs> yeah. you. Yes. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? And oh, it, yeah. it had to be even worse because it's like your radio show. We had a guest fill in. I'm watching like, somebody, come, yes. Somebody come pick me up. This <laughs> is my this is my deal here. I only leave three minutes away. Not <laughs> yeah. even three minutes away. 
yeah. I just man, I was laying down in bed. It was like ten thirty at night, and I just kept getting all these alerts. <laughs> Chuck commented, Chuck commented, like, "What is Chuck doing?" <laughs> I'm a dumbass. And you're like, "No, seriously, I'm not kidding. Somebody pick me up." Yeah, stop, stop laughing. Let's go. Come pick me up. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. I bet. <laughs> You know, else was a lot of fun is uh, that phone call with Ben's brother, Brian. I think that's why I fell asleep because <laughs> I was listening back to that. Such a riveting conversation between those two. I know. Have I said on the air about the, my whole thing of if you gave me rep, no repercussions? Okay. If you give I don't me. I so. Okay. If you, I say this all the time in, in our real life. But uh, if you give me, you say, Chuck, go crazy. No repercussions. Do whatever you want. Oh, it's not good. It's not. I mean, I'd be dead in a week. Like the uh, ultimate hall pass for anything. anything. Law, morals. Yeah, nothing. You No, no, re, social, no rules. You, you, you know, your social relationships, your whatever else it might be, romantic, whatever. Uh, no jail. So hall pass for everything. Whatever. You do whatever the hell you want and no repercussions. Oh, my Lord. It'd be, it'd be unreal. I'd be like uh, whenever um, Bill Murray gets just sick of be- living the, the day over and over and over again on Groundhog Day, yeah. and he just yeah runs off the damn cliff and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, that would happen if you gave me that scenario. Bad, bad, bad things would happen. If you give <laughs> Ben and Brian that scenario, Ben wakes up in the same time he ever does every day. <laughs> right. He kisses his wife on his forehead, <laughs> goes, or on her forehead. Goes to work. Goes to work on time. Eight hours. Uh, it takes his lunch on time. <laughs> yeah. he, get, he gets off at the same, <laughs> says hi, bye Larry, and, and goes home and does nothing. Yeah. Same, and nothing changes. No, he's he's in the Truman Show, and he likes being in the Truman Show, yes, yeah. <laughs> right? Where most people want to get out of that, like, oh, my gosh, everything's fake, and everything's the same all the time, and the, the mailman, you know, yeah. shows up yeah. at the same time and throws the paper boy, throws the paper. If he he, re- he realizes it, and he goes, oh, this is cool. Yeah, if he was Truman, he'd be like, no, tell me, stop. Get that <laughs> yeah. lady. The lady that wants to go to Fiji, she'd be, he'd be like, get her out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what about those knives, honey? The, the knives she's trying to sell? Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, yeah, he'd love it. Okay, so let's play that game then. Yeah. I mean, I'm the same way. Probably not not as much as you. Yeah. But it's going to be a little bit like the Tasmanian devil. <laughs> you know, you get that ultimate hall pass that we're calling it. Yeah. All of a sudden, I, like, I, don't, I guess maybe that is the question. Is like, where would you start? Uh, Money, ooh. right? Like you'd go rob a bank. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's no repercussions, so you just walk in, just swinging, boom, just start <laughs> just smacking old ladies and everything. Uh, yeah, I'd go get as yeah much money as possible. I mean, I guess go. Fi- I'm not a big drug guy, but I guess I've had to find some. I like mushrooms. <laughs> I've, I've done those before, and I have a good time to see them. So I probably just chew those all day long. Yeah, I think the temptation of that you can do it, you're gonna do it even if you don't even want to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm never gonna be able to do it again. Uh, oh man, it'd be awful, 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 awful. Thank goodness we don't have that. Right. Was it the purge or something? Yeah, yeah. Be, yeah I think we're talking about... I'm a one-man purge, buddy. It's going to be bad news. Yeah, I think we're talking about a plot of a movie, <laughs> basically. This is the Barn Radio Show live from the Barn Studios. Go to www.betterhelp.com forward slash the barn for mental health services. Uh, this and everything else that we do is sponsored by them, and we'll be back after this. Welcome back to the Barn Radio Show, live from the Barn Studios. We've got the Mox and the Chuck here, Yo. and we are uh, here recording on a Friday, and we got the ball game on. Been watching a lot of baseball here lately. Our team, the Cardinals, haven't been playing that well. I'd say we're hitting pretty well, but our pitching has struggled at times. Not great, man. Yeah. And uh, we got a couple TVs up, and we have some even some college ball going on up there. Your team, Miami versus North Carolina. Can't see the score oh. on it, but uh, the warm the warmer weather has brought in baseball. I've out played some golf earlier today. We barbecued the other day. Feels nice to be back in the full swing of all the spring sports. We just yes. had the Masters tournament, so beautiful, which awesome. was awesome. Yeah, um, and you were telling me before we went on air that there was a no hitter. I wasn't aware there was a no hitter the other day. Okay, first of all, the minor league team, the minor league teams have great names. A, a lot of them do, but this. <laughs> This team is out of it's out, they're out of Alabama. They're called the uh, Rocket City Trash Pandas. How freaking awesome is that name? The Rocket City Trash Pandas. Yeah, we've kind of talked about that where <laughs> where they can have a little bit more fun. There's a little bit more uh, I guess oh, flexibility yeah. with some of the rules and yeah. some of the things they do. They're the Double A affiliate of the uh, Cal- or the uh, Los Angeles Angels. They were playing uh, uh, the affiliate of the of the Reds. Well, um, they threw a no hitter and. Uh, they lost uh, seven to three, or seven to five. 
They allowed seven runs with a no hitter. Oh, geez. It's insanity. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> so how did it happen? I mean, I'm guessing a lot of walks, errors. Yes. Okay. So uh, let's see. Uh, throw up here. They 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 walk four batters in a row. Oh, they walk four batters allow five runs. I know. I remember the one time the dude just completely failed to catch a, a pop fly right to him, and it just started a downhill just awful fest of errors. And okay, here it is. Here's may we present the uh, may we present the formula for winning a game with no hits? Walk. Walk, F four. That's shortstop. No, no, no. That's uh, third. Second shortstop. One, four. Two, four. Three. Yeah, that's shortstop. Okay, so um, walk, walk, air or shortstop air. Walk, K, but K plus walk plus E eight. That's the outfielder dropped the ball plus a hit by pitch. Oh yeah, yeah. Three hit by pitches in a row. In a row. And then <laughs> another walk. And then a wild pitch. Another hit batter. And then it can't, yeah, they won. That's insane. That might be the best game ever. Okay, yes. Let's go one more time. I'm sorry. Walk, walk, error, walk, strikeout. There we go. Walk, uh, center fielder or right fielder dropped the ball. Hit by pitch, hit by pitch, hit by pitch. Walk, wild pitch, hit by pitch. (laughs) That all happened in a a row. Jeez. That's insanity. (laughs) Jeez. Yeah. No hits, no hitter lost seven to five. Has that ever happened before? They couldn't have been like that high score. And I've seen no hitters be lost, but that's like one nothing, two nothing, yeah, like that. not yeah. seven runs. <laughs> yeah, How do you do bit. that? That's insane. <laughs> hey, we were in here. We did a live the other day, and Micah, who's on the live stream right now, we uh, did a live stream with the new PGA Tour, EA yeah. Sports PGA Tour game, and they actually would talk about the Masters a little bit, but the uh, Augusta's on there. And uh, it was really cool to kind of watch him and, and uh-huh. see him stream while we kind of commentate. And, and he's a golf fan, but I wouldn't say in the same sense that we are, like the particulars and knowing right. all the details and stuff. So he was like, hey, what should I do here? What kind of shot shape should I hit here? But that game looks really cool. I'm definitely going to buy it at some point. Oh, dude, it looked amazing, especially the, the course that we have been to. You've been to a couple of them. Mm-hmm. We have been to the top of the rock. The par three. Cor- I can't believe I have a par three course on the PGA game. Part three course. That's weird, right? Yeah, that is crazy. Wild. Yeah. It is a cool fucking course, though. Yeah, there's a course down oh. near Branson, Missouri. I know, you know, Ned Flanders is like, that's like Ned's <laughs> Vegas, right? Like, right, yeah. a lot of people make fun of Branson. And, and I, you know, it, it is a little cheesy at times, but it's really kind of becoming one of the golf destinations in America. It makes sense. They're old people. Right. Yeah. Retired. There's, there's a lot place, of retired yeah. people down there. Yeah. So, um, there's one that actually Jack Nicholas designed. It's a three, it's a par three course called Top of the Rock, and it's on top of a one of the Ozark Mountains overlooking the Table Rock Lake down there, which is a pretty lake. And uh, we played it many years ago, fifteen years ago, right when it was built. And uh, you know, probably had a few drinks, even yeah. if we played in the morning time. Our buddy John, oh god, pretty uh, <laughs> doesn't have you know didn't have it like. A lot of patience. Yeah, or decorum or <laughs> yeah. or clean clothes or <laughs> Yeah, you know. He wasn't he wasn't the type of guy that you'd take to church with you. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, he passed away now and it sucks. I mean, you know, I love the guy. Love we love him. But I mean, in true John fashion, the people sitting next to us, the one lady sitting right next to, right in front of me in the pew had on an Al Bundy uh <laughs> high school jersey at a funeral. <laughs> yeah. And they played Leonard Skinner at his yes. funeral. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, yep, this is it. About as redneck as you can get. Yeah. And some people listening to this are probably like, man, you guys are insensitive. Like, you don't know us very well. No. But uh, you don't even know how bad, I, how insensitive I've been to him, by the way. Go ahead. <laughs> One day. Maybe. Or he was the other people. <laughs> <laughs> or he was, yeah. So we're playing golf and, you know, it's a, it's a pretty popular course. So we were nut to butt with everybody else. You know, we were either waiting on somebody or somebody was waiting on us. Well, he got tired of it by like hole seven or eight. <laughs> and these old ladies, you know, slower players. 65, right? 70 years old. Yeah. Having a great time they were. Yeah. They were up in front of us. We were on the tee box. They were on the green, you know, probably three or four putting. Well, he just got tired of waiting. We were just sitting there forever. Buzz was wearing off 10 <laughs> o'clock in the morning. He says, screw it. I'm going to hit. He walks up to his tee ball, and we we thought he's you know gonna line it up or do something, not actually hit it. Well, he swung it. We're like, holy cow, they're still on the green. 
Yeah. Well, by that time, his ball is in flight, and those ladies are walking towards their cart. So he hits this thing. These poor old ladies, they just, they just hold out. They're not even, to the, they're walking to their cart, and we're like, dude, 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 don't hit that. He's like, he's like, screw up. And he swings, and we're like, oh my God. He just looks, at, he looks down, right when he swung, he just goes, four, and he throws, about that loud. He goes, four, and he threw his club and started running away. We're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. These ladies get in their cart, and it hits on the top of the cart. Pow! I mean, right on the top. It would have killed one of them. <laughs> Easily killed one of them. Yeah, and he goes and like hides in the bushes, and we're standing there on the tee box, so they look back at us and think it's us. Yeah, I don't and know. We can't go like pointing over to our buddy that's hiding in the bushes. He he's a big boy too, and he just took off running. Like, where are you going? Where are you? What's your plan here, man? Yeah, yeah hey, like we're gonna just take the rap. <laughs> and, and it was like the quietest four ever too. It wasn't like you know four. Yeah, it was like four. He was an asshole, an asshole, but he was terrified, man. He knew he messed up on that one, <laughs> and he don't know he messed up a lot of times. I don't know that one. I just don't know what he's thinking there. I don't either. I don't know what he was running to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God, man, it was terrifying, dude. I oh my god, I it would have killed one of them, one hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. The, that course, and you can see the spot where that happened. I forget what hole it is, seven or eight. But uh, it's on that new game. And Mike is on the live stream right now, and he just asked what your favorite round of golf that you've ever played was. I don't know what it was in my brain, but um, I felt like I should, I deserve to play a good game of golf because I just sold my house for like $15,000 less than what it would have went for because uh, ladies, she lost her family and stuff. So we had kind of agreed to, okay, you know, help her out. And uh, I was like, damn it, I deserve to have a good game of golf today. And I tore it up, son. Tore it up. I don't know what I shot, but it was, I think it was like a 37 or something like that. On the, on the, It was awesome. Killing it. Yeah, that's my best. I feel like all my best games, all my best rounds are when people aren't there. Oh. So it's one of those things where like nobody, yeah. like, man, I shot a 80 something today. Like, yeah, sure. I watched you hit a 103 yesterday. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. But don't you feel like that happens a lot? You play better alone? I caught up with you guys one time. You was like on the fourth hole or something like that. And so I was like, I'm playing the first three, damn it. I paid for them. So I'll catch up with them. And uh, you guys were waiting on me. And I told you I was playing the first three. Dude, I part every one of them. I think I made a birdie one of them. And I get to you guys and I shot shit the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. It's ridiculous. It's so mental. Golf is so mental, so psychological. Hardest sport I've ever played in my life, dude. Yeah, it's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. Masters is awesome, though. Masters. Ma the Masters was awesome, man. Oh, this year? Yeah. Oh, dude. yeah. Oh, dude. John Rahm was phenomenal. I didn't think anybody was going to catch Brooks, but I yeah. guess if there's somebody that could, it's not Scotty Scheffler, it'd be John Rahm. And, uh, yeah. But that was a lot of fun to watch. We've talked about it several times, and even when we did our Masters broadcast, Masters.com is the best, and the app as well is the best broadcast yeah. of any sports there is. You can watch every single shot on every single hole. You can pick and like kind of make your team or your own featured group, and it goes back and forth to what you can see there. They just do it in such a way that I don't know why other sports don't pick it up. Yeah. Like football needs to go to masters.com and kind of learn a lesson there. Yeah. Uh, especially with the fantasy stuff. Now, I think they kind of do, they try to do something similar with the Red Zone, Red Zone channel where you can follow your fantasy yeah. really closely. Yeah. But I almost feel like, and maybe this is pretty nearsighted because I am into betting more than I am to fantasy play, but I feel like betting is kind of taken over. Sports betting in general is, is taking over fantasy. I don't feel like fantasy is as popular as it once was. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. It, it... There's more – what guys want is they want to be able to put logic to their bets and stuff. Now, now logic, when you make a fantasy team, yes, it is logical. Not all – but there's like 80% of it's luck, man, you know, 20%, 30, whatever. But with sports betting, there's a lot of – you take a lot of the luck out of it. Like in, in fantasy sports, you need nine people or whatever it is, you know, to, to hit – I love it. I, and I can't wait till it's freaking legal in Missouri, and then I'm going to go broke. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not a math guy. I don't particularly – I'm not very good at math. Right. But one thing that I do understand better than, like, algebra is statistics uh -huh. and probability. And I do like that kind of math, which when you are betting and a lot of the fantasy stuff, it is that. 
And yes. for fantasy, for me, there was just too many variables. Like you're saying, you had to have too many things right mm -hmm. to have a lot of success. Now, you could probably get by with some some smaller amount wins. And I think you did a lot of the yeah. time where you would just kind of make your money back or a little bit more mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. But if you're really kind of chasing a big win, it, there's just way too many variables the, for me. The key to playing uh, daily, daily fantasy sports, say football, the key to playing it, the number one rule is to eliminate – Ways you can lose, like can uh, like uh, stack games. You want you want uh, more of the one thing to happen. Do you want to have the least amount of things that can happen? You want to like say bet on three games, uh, all, all the players from three games that you think is going to high score. Not one dude from here, one dude from here, one dude from because you ha you need all these teams to score like crazy. Yeah, you got to do it in just one or two games, man. So you do try to narrow it down. Yeah, you your yeah. your um, minimize risk. That's what, it, yeah, you minimize the risk. You, there you go. That's yeah. what we're doing. Christ, God, Lord. <laughs> oh, I did talk to my, our, you guys from two hours like prior, so I'm not a smart man. <laughs> this is the Barn Radio <laughs> Show, live from the Barn Studio, courtesy of Dirt Road FM, and we'll be back after this. Welcome back to the Barn Radio Show, live from the Barn Studios in Southeast Missouri, courtesy of Dirt Road FM and betterhelp.com forward slash the barn. Go there for all your mental health needs, 10% off your first month of mental health services. Chuck, it's, it's uh, good to be back in the barn. It is, it is, yes. You've been working on a table for some of our live streams. Yeah. How's the table thing going? Good, good, good. I got it all ready to go. I just got to, yeah, touch it up with a little paint and it's good to go, baby. It's, yeah, we will, uh, we'll be doing some full casting couch live streams. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Whatever it is. That, ca that couch and that table is going to be part of the family of forever. What did, uh, I think Dale called it a uh, barn hub, like porn hub. Barn hub, <laughs> nice. Barn like hub it. casting couch. I like it. Uh, yeah, we, we <laughs> might have found that like in the dumpster, but we got a cool table and eventually I want to get a rug in here as well. So uh, follow us on all the <laughs> socials and our YouTube channel to see some of those live streams. We've been doing a lot more lives lately. I've been enjoying that really. Yeah. Uh, I kind of always said, you know, even the radio stuff that we do, these are conversations that we would have anyway. So it's just yeah. more fun to turn the mics on and maybe somebody gets a kick out of it or a laugh. We do appreciate all of our new subscribers and followers. There's a bunch of you out there. And uh, shout out to you guys. And thanks for sticking with us. And uh, yeah, we're back in the barn. It feels yeah. good to be back here, man. I love it, dude. I love it. I, I, I love going on. It's kind of like when we go on vacation. I love to go to Memphis. I love to go to Nashville. I love to go all the place. But I love coming back home, dude. A couple days in, I'm like, damn, wish I was home, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I had a, I'm notorious. My daughters make fun of me. My wife makes fun of me. I'm notorious for falling asleep at the movies. Yeah, I probably would. Yeah, yeah. I just, the older I get, man, the easier it is to fall asleep in the in the recliner watching the game. And yeah. the damn sure at the movies, you turn the light off and, you know, turn the lights off. And, and they make everybody quiet. They, you gotta be quiet. You don't have this shit at home. <laughs> no. Quiet? No way. You got kids. No way you got quiet at home. So I'm notorious for that. And I actually, because of that, I don't go to a lot of movies because what's the point of going there and falling asleep? I just wait yeah. till I watch it at home, you know? But man, there was, a, there was a movie that me and my daughters and my wife have been really excited about ever since we heard that it was coming out, which is uh, Super Mario Brothers. Yes. Came out a couple weeks ago now, but uh, we watched it this past week. And uh, I know you haven't seen it. But uh, was really good. It's one of those that's done really well where the adults can enjoy it and the kids can enjoy it, too. It helps that I came up. You know, Super Nintendo is my favorite all-time gaming system. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, dude. You know, I know a lot of people will pick the PlayStation 2s or Super Nintendo, whatever. dude. Yes, Super Nintendo. But uh, Super Nintendo was it for me. Uh -huh. And I even remember when I was a youngster, I got it for Christmas one year and I played the heck out of the Mario. And that's when they really kind of started amping up Mario quite a bit. Mario World, dude. Mario World was awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you could fly with the cape and uh -huh. Yoshi, I think. Yoshi, dude. Yeah, Yoshi. Yeah, that's the first Yoshi. Dude, S awesome. So, uh, and my girls are into Mario. We have a Nintendo Switch and we play it. Not every night, but we play it often. We play Mario Kart. We play Mario Party, which is a great game. Really fun game. So anyway, this is the first time we've all kind of been excited about a same mo the same movie. So it's been planned for a while that we knew on opening night, weekend opening night, because I think it actually came out on like a Wednesday or yeah. something, we were all going to go. And uh, I took a nap earlier that day, so I didn't fall asleep at night. No, I'm kidding. I didn't take a nap. But <laughs> I didn't fall asleep, but I really enjoyed the movie. Yep. Really enjoyed it. It was done really well. Like I said, it was it was entertaining for adults and kids. 
The soundtrack was good. The animation was really well done. And there's all these little, like, and I'm not much of a gamer. Very, yeah, yeah. Very I wish I was. amateur gamer. God, I wish I was. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, all these, even I caught some of the nuggets in there that they kind of had. Like, one of the one of the restaurants, like the pizza place was called Punch Out Pizza or something. Oh, nice. And it was like a... You know, yeah, Nint- old Nintendo, Super Nintendo Punch Out, and right, and uh, anyway, a bunch of cool little nuggets in there. So we really enjoyed that. If you're listening to this, I, and you have definitely, if you have kids or if you just enjoy Mario, I would definitely recommend that movie. Easy watch too, hour and a half. I'll tell you this: I have seen a lot of trailers for movies lately, uh, for the past years, and I've, there's hardly anything that I've wanted to actually watch, uh, except for the. Who the hell thought they would make the like that Mario Kart was the next movie they were gonna make? Is that's weird too? Like they had just a uh, big thing was the Last of Us. That was a, a show, a, a show. But it was a game, yeah. and uh, like they, they've been doing those games like that for uh, shows and all that shit uh, since like Laura Croft and stuff. Who the hell knew Mario Kart was the next <laughs> one they come out with? But that's one of the first movies I've seen in a long time. And I was like, ooh, dude, I gotta watch that one, man. I didn't know this going in. Donkey Kong, yeah, voiced by Seth Rogen. Really? Okay, let me think that about Think it. about it. Okay. It works. Does it? Yeah, it does work, doesn't it? It works. Here's one I also didn't know about, and it wasn't a big role, but uh, Sebastian Manicalco. Manical- yeah, Man- Maniscalco? Maniscalco yeah. was in there, Italian guy. He oh, actually, right, yeah, duh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he actually, I think, tried out to be Mario, and they're like, no, we want you as this other guy. <laughs> Damn, who, who's more Italian than he is? Good Lord. Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's what him and um, <laughs> Pete Corielli. Oh, yeah, yeah. Corielli is yeah. like, just because he went in there and he's like, it's me. And Corielli is like, no, just talk like Sebastian. Right. <laughs> <You> <laughs> yeah, get the yeah, part. Be yeah. Good Lord, man. The dude who got it over him was like pizza Pascarelli. or like, he's got to be the most Italian guy ever. I think some of the hardcore gamers had issues with who was cast, the voice acting for Mario. Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt got that over. Okay. I'm confused now. Chris Pratt, the funny dude. The Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was okay. kind of an odd choice too. I mean, it it worked. But, I'm sure. Yeah, but it, sure. Did, it really didn't sound like the the Mario that you. It, it's a you know. Yeah, yeah, one. yeah. Huh. I like Chris Pratt, but I would have never saw him as being Mario. Bowser, Jack Black. Oh, okay. Yeah, I see somebody with deeper like a. Yeah, deeper. Okay, Jack Black. That works so. though. Who's the dude on Field of Dreams? Uh, someone Costner? Oh, 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 no! You're talking about uh, uh, Darth Vader, you dude. Uh, yeah. Yeah, good lord, I can't remember his name right now. Earl, oh. something Earl. James Earl Jones. James Earl Jones. Yeah, that's it. What a voice that guy was. <laughs> yeah, he would be a good Bowser, I think. Jeez, man. Uh, but it makes me think about, there was a movie about your life, who's going to play you? Oh, <sighs> they don't make movie stars look like me, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm a radio guy. I don't know, I've always heard uh, John Cusack. John Cusack, yeah, okay. a long time ago, yeah, that dude funny we bring up jack black i used to get jack black sometimes yeah i see that yeah when i had maybe a little bit longer hair yeah i can see that that's uh, a, that's a pretty sad movie so far i've never i've never gotten anybody uh like complimenting like <laughs> there's, no, there's I've, never, I've never been like really you think i look like them wow that's great that's never happened <laughs> hey D- danny devito yeah like, play you. <laughs> they're like hey hey there's throw mama from the train <laughs> like hey mama yeah that's, it's never good who would be your love interest Ooh, Margie Robbo. Well, or what, what's her name? Okay, I said Mar- Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie. No, yeah. Okay, I say this all the time, and I'm dead serious about this. The hottest. Okay, I'm talking about the hottest celebrity. All I say, everybody's got their hottest celebrity. I'm dead serious. The hottest celebrity in Hollywood is Ryan Reynolds. I don't give a shit if he's a guy. He's hottest celebrity in Hollywood, no doubt in my book. And he's hot and he's funny. That's bullshit, by the way. <laughs> that's like that's like uh, you saying Bolt. Stop doing the wind sprints, dude. You're the best. Just stop. You're you're fine. You're 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 gonna win. But um, so man, your love interest would be Ryan Reynolds. Well, no, I couldn't do that. But I'm just saying he is the hottest uh, celebrity of all of them. He's number one. Uh, let's see who's my, who's the chick I like. Man, I'm not really good at this. Oh wait, uh, uh, Britney Spears. Boom. <laughs> I love Britney Spears. Still, is she an actor? Still, I don't know what she is. She's still freaking hot. And, H- Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana. <laughs> Oh, she's actually when she gets her boobs pushed up like she's she looks really hot too hannah montana yeah that's uh, not that's hannah montana it's molly cyrus <laughs> Jeez, don't put that on me i had that dude hey can you want to sit over here for a second bud 
How'd that guy come in? <laughs> right. <laughs> no, um, dude, uh, Miley Cyrus has that vocal fry going on. I love the raspy voice. I know she does. She sounds like she's got a voice decoder or one of these kazoo. What's the yeah, the, yeah, the can- cancer kazoo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dolly Parton's my mom. So she's got one of those things that uh, uh, Cindy Lauper has. If you listen to Cindy Lauper talk, you're like, how the fuck does she sound yeah. so amazing, like an angel when she sings? I'm sure, her singing is fantastic. Well, Ozzy, Mel, oh God, Mel yeah. Tillis, right? He was a famous stutterer. Right, couldn't right, speak right. a sentence, but I could sing that. like an angel. <laughs> Ozzy, you can't even decipher what Not he's saying, but when he sings, it's something different. Yeah, that's crazy like that. Huh. And even like accents, too. Right. All those guys that sound English, are the English guys yeah. that sound... Green Day. Yeah, that's nuts, man. Madonna, yeah. Madonna does that sometimes, too. She'll yeah. talk. She'll talk with an accent. Is that she's married to the guy Richie, dude? She just started talking English? I worked at the... Uh, St. Louis Post Dispatch when I was younger, and uh, hanging out the, at the uh, bottom rung of the place, me and all the black guys, you know, we we uh, we deliver the mail and all that stuff. And I said uh, we was talking, talking, talking. I just got into with all of them, and I just said, and I start, I said her one time instead of here. I was like, oh shit! I was like, I gotta stop. I gotta leave. I I'm gonna get killed. Yeah, in St. Louis, if you don't know, the, the, yeah, this is what a thing. They go her instead of yeah, here. It's country grammar. Country grammar, baby. Yeah, I said it once, and I was like, oh, dear Lord. I hope nobody heard that. That reminds me. My mom, in her car, she has this old Magnum, and it, and it plays D, uh, CDs. She, told me, she goes, I got the, I got a tape. I got a, I got a tape of Creedus Clearwater. I go, you got a tape? You got a tape like, that rewinds and stuff? She's like, no, one of those. It's like a circle. It's like a circle. Like a, I go, you got a, di- a CD, Mom. It's not a tape. But anyway, the only t- the CD that she has is clear- Credence Clearwater Revival. John by- fucking Fogarty, man. <laughs> by the way, not a bad choice. No, well, right, yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in. If you but, just have one, that's the greatest hits that you could just put on repeat. Oh, absolutely. But some of the ways that uh, that Fogarty uh, announces uh, pronounces words in there is so weird, man. I gotta I gotta find some stuff. Sing- Hold on, I gotta do this, man. Why don't you uh, look for that when we come back yeah, yeah, yeah. after this break? Please. We will uh, play some John Fogarty, man. He'll fucking sing a song for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love him, dude. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to the Barn Radio Show live from the Barn Studios in Southeast Missouri, courtesy of Dirt Road FM and BetterHelp.com forward slash the barn for mental health services. Chuck, did you find what you were looking for with the Credence? Yes, dude. Okay. Like I say, my mom, I was listening to this today and I'm like, what the hell? Why is he saying it like this? What's going on here? He's like, like uh, Proud Mary. Big wheels keep on toining. Proud Mary keep on boining. It don't even. It doesn't. It, you don't need it for the song. Like you, I would bend shit if I needed to. Like right, like, right. A, like a Eddie Vedder or some shit does, but not this. I don't even know why he doesn't. Boining. <laughs> yeah. Even and, the, the first sign of the song, he's like, he's like waking for the man every night. I'm like why? What? Some kind of accent. I think they're from Louisiana. They always called him like the the swamp. Sound or whatever. He is from California. <laughs> what? Oh, I don't know if that's where he grew up, though. That's where. Oh, I see California, California, California. Okay. Holy shit! Was well, always yeah. said it was like a swamp, swamp stomp or something. I don't know, man. Yeah. He, he said, I don't, yeah, I, yeah. Berkeley, California. They don't. I don't know any other Berkeley people who go boining, oh. boining. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're so used to hearing it, we just don't even hear it anymore. Like we don't. It don't like raise a red flag to us. Have you ever heard the story? Well, you probably have because I think I heard it on Howard Stern. But um, you know the Californians bit that they do on mm-hmm. SNL, yeah, with Hater and uh, what's bridesmaid lady? What's uh, her name? Kristen Wiig. Yeah, yeah. And where they're like, oh, I yeah. took the four hundred five. Yeah, yeah. Do you did you ever hear where they came? Where Bill Hader kind of came up with that bit, and I think maybe Armisen too came up with that bit. And the the like the slang and the, no. the voice where they got it. I don't remember that. So Dana Carvey's yeah. son, you know, he Dana Carvey's from Canada. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, through Hollywood and, and all the things that Dana was doing, they, he grew up in California, probably, you know, near the four oh five. Right. And uh he somehow Hader or Armisen heard the interaction between Dana Carvey and his son, and he was like doing that California, like everything he kind of talks that oh, way. Oh, no. It's like, yeah, I took the 405 and where they're just talking highways, how they get directions or whatever. Oh, man. 
So it's actually a pretty funny bit. Anytime those guys would ever go on Stern or really anywhere, Armisen too. Yeah. I love Armisen on like talk shows and on yeah. the drummer thing. He does a whole accent where he has the map. And he's like, yeah, if you're from here, you talk this way and here from that way. Have you ever seen that bit? Uh, no. Oh, it's really oh, funny. Oh, yeah, but it is. It done really, really well. Did you ever see the Gallagher one where he had the map? And he's throwing like the, the food up there. He's like, refried beans, Mexico, boom. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that was a good, that was funny. Have you ever heard the Gallagher 2 thing? No. So Gallagher, I guess at some point, just decided to check out from comedy. Like, I don't want to tour no more. I don't want this life anymore. I'm yeah. done with being Gallagher. And I think it was maybe his idea or his brother's idea, because they look pretty similar. He's like, hey, why can't I go out and tour you can write the comedy, or maybe it was already written. Right. You can write the bits, and I'd go perform it, and we split the money or whatever. So this was kind of a deal between them two. Okay. Well, Gallagher, one, decided he wanted to come back and be a stand-up com comedian again. Oh, shit. So they end up being like the Gallagher Oasis brothers. Hating each other. <laughs> hating each other. <laughs> and they have the same bits and the same stand-up, and it's like, Gallagher one and Gallagher two. I didn't know this until recently. I hadn't heard of this till recently. That's wild. Our buddy Nate was telling telling me about it. I was like, I could not believe that. But That's, like smashing watermelons. Oh dear lord! And it, doing the whole Gallagher bit. So, and Gallagher two was he called Gallagher two or was he just called Gallagher? I think it was Gallagher two. I think okay, they, they that, didn't hide it or okay. anything like that. Oh thank God! It wasn't the old switcheroo. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. You talk about. I know that he had that gimmick, you know, the smash warm stuff, but he was hilarious, man. Yeah. He didn't need it. You know, he, he, he pulled yeah. that out, but he didn't need it. I remember the Fantastic. special with the big old couch. It might have been the same one where he's like bouncing on the couch. The <laughs> couch, couch is a trampoline or whatever. He's an athletic little son of a bitch, man, bouncing like that. He's always, like, he come out on roller skates and stuff all the time. He's good. Yeah. And, you know, he obviously had a gimmick. Mm -hmm. Like you said, didn't need it. Carrot Top is kind of one of, one of those guys where a lot of people will call his act hacky yeah because of the uh, the gadgets and the gimmicks and stuff what do you think about that i think he's hilarious i think um i mean he found a niche he, he first of all he started doing that when he was really really young you know what i'm saying and uh he just found that niche and and ran with it but he is a funny funny guy like with, like he'll do a little invention and it don't work when he'll when he's himself after <laughs> yeah. it fucks up he's he's hilarious man he's like shouldn't have brought that one yeah he's like well, yeah. <laughs> throws it back in the trunk he's a riot man <laughs> Yeah, I think he's funny too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, like you'll find it. Some people find a niche like that. Like, uh, it's weird to hear like um, uh, Jeselnik on stage and then him do an interview. You mm. know what I'm saying? That they're so polar opposites of his character on stage and then off. It's it's kind of weird. So same deal. Well, I think the biggest one, the most recognizable one of that is Dice. Yes, Dice had this persona that was on stage, and people off stage wanted it. And I know <laughs> there's still he's still a little bit that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably yeah. not as much. You know, he would amplify it up, and then mm -hmm. uh, you know he's an entertainer, and you know, and he was he always wanted to be an entertainer. Wanted you know Ford Fairlane that was pretty early early on ish in his career, but like he wanted to be an actor and be yeah. in movies. And he is a good actor. Great actor. That that four felling was fucking hilarious, man. Freaking hilarious. It, he was in the one with uh, Louis. Oh, Blue October. Yeah. Yes, something like that. Yeah. He was in a movie called Blue October. He's really good. Yep. And he had that. Uh, he had a show. He was on. Uh, he was like the father of somebody. He was really good on that too. Another another thing he's in is um, A Star Is Born. He plays right. Lady Gaga's dad. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I. Yeah, that's what it was. He's like a limousine driver or mm -hmm. something. Very good. Yeah, very good. Very good. And that would suck to have to be that character all the time. You got. You'd have to explain to people, dude. I'm, come on. You think I really act like that? Yeah. Do you remember that f that famous video clip of him when he came out? It was like maybe Arsenio, and he tried to be himself. No. So he's trying to like be himself and try to get away from not the gimmick but the persona, uh -huh. and he just realizes it's like n not going over well. Yeah. So then he just goes back into the oh oh wow you see that transformation like oh you see it in one in one interview you see that happen. Well, yeah, it was a That's, performance. It was, was like stand up. Yeah, and I wow. think he even kind of like got teary eyed or something. There's there was something to that. I can't remember all the specifics, but I love. Uh, the, when stand-up comedy, d even if it, it accidentally just falls into uh, serious, like, you can tell, like, Bo Burnham, if you watch the special before the last one that he did at his house, um, which is a fucking phenomenal, um, if you watch the last one he did before that, it was like five years ago, the final song that he did, the final bit that he did was uh, this Kanye thing, and um, uh, he was... 
But anyway, while he's doing it, he's telling the crowd, that motherfucker's still doing it in it. <laughs> yeah. We're with you, though. Okay. So anyway, um, he's telling the crowd just everything that's in his head. And you got to understand, it, when you watch it now, knowing that after that, after that, he went on like a five-year hiatus to help, to uh, uh, repair himself mentally. But he's telling the audience, he's like, I want to please, he's like, he's singing it, you know, being serious, being funny and stuff, but he's really being serious. He's like, I, I want to please you. You know, I, I, um, you just have to see this. It. It's a fucking unbelievable, man. He's, he's selling the audience. He's like, I, I'm falling apart right here. You guys don't get it. You're laughing, and it's, but I'm falling apart. You don't, you don't see it. Yeah. It's crazy. Man, with some of the artists that we talked to, some of the musicians, some of them, I would say, have been more popular in the past than they are now. Yeah. Is that a fair? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Fair statement? Yeah. It's interesting, some of the conversations that we have when they're maybe on the back side of their career instead of the front side and how things change and how much of a struggle it is. Yeah. No, I wouldn't say it's like bad, right? Where it's like, you know, crazy heart. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Where they're playing like bowling alleys. Yeah, yeah. But some of the artists that we talk to, I think this, the the height of their success might be behind them. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, some of the struggles that they have going out and still living that lifestyle that they're used to and the job and the career that they're used to and the world has changed right so technology has changed and you know even a yes. year it gets brought up a lot but like inflation and the cost of touring and making money and how you make money and then like venues taking percentages of like their own merch which makes no sense to and me whatsoever very yeah yeah and event and a very very important part is uh promoting yourself god how that's changed you know yes jeez how, how do you get used to that that's a that's a 180 man and i would say you know, as small time as we are, we've benefited from that because and uh, people are OK calling in and trying to promote upcoming shows and albums and things, things like that, where like media and promotion and publicity has changed because you don't need all the major outlets that you need anymore. You might need a lot, a lot more of the smaller ones, but you yeah. maybe catch it up in the in the, you know, that's cool. Did you? I mean, you don't have to kiss the, the retro labels' ass. So you can do it yourself. It's tough, I'm sure, way tough, but you can way bit way easier than you could. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we're talking about stand up comedy, and we always br we bring it up a lot. But like seeing how independent artists are now, mm -hmm. Dan Cummings, a yes. famous podcaster, stand up comedian, uh, writer, workaholic. Good, good, <laughs> yeah. I don't know how he does all this shit. Does yes. everything. He was one of the first ones to say, like, I don't live in L.A. I don't live in New York, even though I'm in the entertainment world and you don't really need to anymore. And that makes a lot of sense to me, too, Yeah, that you can be entertainment, be a content producer or whatever that might be and um, still kind of do it on your own terms. And it's actually really inspiring when we talk to people like that. And it, it wasn't just him. We've talked to several since even yeah. musicians and yeah. bands and artists that are sort of doing the same thing. And it's kind of inspiring for what we're trying to do, I would say. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, the reason we got on that subject is because um, I listened to his uh, podcast forever, and I'm, I'm a big Dan Cummins fan, big, big, big. And um, I know that he is a great father. He is really, really into his kids' lives. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're very close and all this. And I wondered with the podcast, with him touring and all this stuff, because back in the day, like Larry Bird, I don't even know if he knows his, her his daughter. You know what I'm saying? Like you always hear these terrible stories about the about their how bad of parents they were because they were doing, you know, they had to do this. I think they can do it all now. Like well, Vince Coleman's daughter wrote a book about it. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's probably not just the only one. But uh so uh yeah, I think it's easier to be an actual human being and 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 be an entertainer. He 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 lived in uh, uh, Idaho. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which is <I'm> fucking idaho <laughs> yeah and he's a great father and he puts out all this content and stuff world's changing man he's changing right with it you got to change with it baby i like it i do too i like it that some of when cd sales went away and i know we have a resurgence of vinyl and people like physical copies and i'm one as well you know my cd stacks over there i like physical copies too but when those the ultimate height of CD sales went away. You had to change, right? We had to yeah. kind of we had to kind of reinvent what we were doing to make money because you make nothing on streaming. Right? Streaming is an absolute joke. 
and to kind of take away some of those things that maybe artists and bands and labels and management, whoever was paying for to start doing it some of their own. A lot of the artists that we talk to, we go directly to them. Yeah. We might go through a publicist, you know, probably more often than not, but sometimes we just go directly to them. And some of them are pretty, pretty well-known artists right? Yeah, where they handle all their own stuff. And I'm thinking what they do is try to cut some of that overhead to make up for some of the lack of sales on some of the other things. When I started uh, doing this, we started interviewing people. It floored me at first that like they are the ones that are calling in. They're like, oh, yeah, no, Dan Cummins. Yeah, no, he's going to be the one calling in. Like, you know, like what? He is. You think there'd be somebody else. Hey, this is Ricky yeah. and I'm, I work for Dan. Blah, blah, blah. He's, yeah. Okay, hold on. Here he is. Like, you know, no, <laughs> right. no, he's just calling with his, from his phone. Ali Sadiq, we interviewed him. Great comedian, Ali Sadiq. Great, great, great comedian. Yes, he, great comedian. Dude, this dude was on his own phone. Uh, he had slipped into the workout room because they knew that his family knew that or his kids knew that he would not be in the workout room so he could do the, the interview. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and that phone will pop up sometimes, and it says, you know, Ali Sadiq, <laughs> just like man. it would anybody amazing. else. Yes, uh, amazing. That's pretty cool. Now, we do have, we have talked to a few people. It's like, I'm so-and-so's assistant. Right. We are going to connect you, and you're never going to get his phone number, right. <laughs> which I don't blame him. I don't. Hell no. This is the Barn Radio Show live from the Barn Studio in Southeast Missouri, courtesy of Dirt Road FM and BetterHelp.com forward slash The Barn for mental health services. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to the Barn Radio Show live from the Barn Studios in Southeast Missouri, courtesy of Dirt Road FM and BetterHelp.com forward slash The Barn. Chuck, me, and the family are going car shopping tomorrow, van shopping, soccer mom oh. van shopping. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, not shopping. We're going to test drive some. Right. We're probably due for a new rig. Van? Like, yeah, we like the minivans. I think you need the minivan. You got to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to mess up, buddy. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it got me noticing. And, you know, I, I know that there's a term for this. I can't think of it off the top of my head. But when you, let's say you go and you're like, I want to buy a yellow car. Yeah. And before you do, or maybe you do, you start to notice. You're like, man, I don't see very All many yellow, yellow cars. cars. Yeah. But man, once you buy that yellow car, then you're like, there's yellow cars everywhere. Like when your headlights out, you see every fucking car. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah. So it's kind of one of those things. We were having lunch yesterday, me and McVeigh and Ben, and we were talking about that because Ben has a rental right now and is like, man, I really want this kind of truck until you really start to be aware. And it's like your awareness of it, right? It doesn't yeah. change. There's not suddenly right. more yellow cars on the road. It's how you perceive it, right? It's your yes. awareness of it. Yes, that's. Uh, I, I read about something one time. They say that time flies when you are a kid, and then you know when when you're older, and but you know it drags when you're a kid. Like it seems like forever, but when you get older, like the, the years just go pow, 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 pow. But it's all based on how your perception of how many how when you're younger, a year's forever. I mean, you only have you only <laughs> right. been through seven of them. Yes. So yeah, but when you when you've been through forty seven of them, hell, it's not, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's perception. Yeah, and that's how years run together, and you're like, what year was that? Yeah. <laughs> you sound yeah. like an old person. <laughs> yeah, so there's that. <laughs> I don't. Well, no, you were talking about the van. What, what, yeah, so we're, go we're going tomorrow. That's the fun part, right? You get yeah. to, hey, let's try this one, let's try this one, and then you got to pay the money, yeah. which is not the fun part. Right, right, right. But we're due for it, and we have a minivan now, and it's in you know pretty good shape. It's got some miles on it. It's you know, over 10 years old probably. But uh, you know how when you go to trade in, they give you – you have a, a working, decent vehicle. Yes. And you go to trade in, yeah, and they'll be like, yeah, we'll take uh, 500 off the top of that yeah. for you. Yeah, $7. $7. <laughs> the fuck? Dude, on principle, I will not do that. No, I will sit around. I'd give it to somebody before that. Yes. That. I'd give it to somebody. Yeah, like don't – I don't mind – I don't mind being disrespected. I don't mind – if you question my intelligence, just don't do it blatantly. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Or at least Look apologize. Apologize. Be like, hey, man, they're making me say this shit, dude. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. I'm fine with that. Here's, a, I'll tell you what I did one time. I bought a warranty on a car. $3,000 I paid for this warranty, okay? Bumper to bumper. I said, to me, that's like the whole car, it seems. <laughs> I don't know. I guess they meant like from Is one. There more? I, I don't know. Or I, they, apparently, weren't, they weren't talking top to bottom. I guess they not. Were... Yeah, just, just that one little line between. <laughs> so I'm like, um, so uh, every time I take it there, they wouldn't fix shit. And I'm like, what the hell? So I pull my stuff out and I'm looking. I'm like, so I'm prepared this time. I'm like, that's it. I'm prepared. I, it says it's going to fix this. It's right here in this contract. Boom, I'm going. So I go up to the guy. He sh while, while I'm talking, he's, and I, I know he didn't know that he was doing it. He was shaking his head no. I go, I go, what the hell are you shaking your head no for? I said, I ain't even said anything yet. 
I go, you just, you're shaking your head? No, that you're going to turn me down. I ain't even said it yet. You don't even know what I'm going to say. And he's like, he's like, he goes, the reason why, I, he goes, those contracts, man. He goes, those, there's worded. So I go, I didn't word it. I didn't word it. You did. I said, so you screwed up, man. I was like, what are you telling me that for? And he's mm. telling me, well, those contracts are worded it's, it's, it's to say about anything. I go, I didn't do it. Yeah, you're right, so bitch myself. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, man, I hate. Ugh. Oh, yeah, so I left. I threw him the keys and I fucking left the car there. Fuck him. Yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> Bad decision. Terrible decision. But then I, mean, I felt good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and if there were no ramifications for that. that... <laughs> right. Yeah, that goes along with that. But no, man, on principle, I won't do it. I will walk out of there with two cars before I just turn it over for 50 bucks or something. Right. Yeah, so they can just sell it tomorrow for three, four times that. Yeah. Yeah, bullshit, man. I hate shit with cars. Like, I hate cars because they can screw you, dude. I mean, they got you by the balls through these cars. You're fucked. Like, and you knock out a, a fucking, he- uh, like a headlight, the outer, you know, the outer, yeah. fucking, and it's like $5,000 <laughs> yeah. for it. Cause they know that yeah, they got you. You're screwed. We got to import that from China. Like, yeah, no, you don't. It's uh, right behind you. Right there. Yeah. What are you talking about? I wish, you know how they do undercover boss. Right. I yeah. wish they would do like undercover mechanic. Oh God. Like yes, the dude. best mechanic in the world go in and pretend that he's just dumb as can be. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or just like, like a girl. Cause I'm sure they get it too. <sighs> Like, oh, you need this and you need that, right? Right. At the end, uh, Howard Stern used to say that like when people would come and hook video equipment at his house, like a new TV up or something like that, they'd charge him 50 times what they charged somebody else just because they knew he had the money. Right. That's fucked, man. You can't. There's got to there's a law. Lo- got to be laws against that, right? Like gouging people. Like sliding scale fees, but going the other way. Yeah, like, yeah. We know you got money, so we're charging this way. Like, good Lord, man. I love how I love your story of how you pretty much predicted the stock market crash of oh, yeah. the housing market crash. I knew there was a problem <laughs> because uh, I knew that I shouldn't be getting a house loan. My my wife at the time, she's uh she's like we can get a loan, we can get a or we can get buy a brand new house. I'm like no, we cannot buy a brand new house. First of all, you don't have a job. I mean, I, I have a job, but uh, shit, I can't afford a house. Were you nuts? And so, uh, lo and behold, she talks to somebody, or the bank, or whatever, blah, 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 and we're, we're getting a loan. I'm like, what? <laughs> How the hell are they giving me a loan? My, first of all, I could, I don't, two years ago, I couldn't even buy an escort, like a, a, a Ford escort. On a, they're giving me a house? Like, what are you nuts? So, uh, I knew something was fishy. So, uh, so <laughs> something I was like, it was fishy, all right. So I was like, all right, whatever. And, uh, so we go to the courthouse that day. The, the, the day we go to the course, I mean, or wherever the hell you go to sign that shit. And uh, we're looking at it, and I'm like, I'm like reading it, and I go, wait a minute. I go, what is this? Thing? What, what's this here? The, the payments are blah, 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 blah. What's this? That the, why does it say like $3 million at the end? <laughs> and she goes, oh, that's like a balloon payment for blah, blah, blah. I go, so when I pay the house off, it's not paid off. I got to pay something else off? Like, I don't understand what's going on. I mean, it's just this weird, crazy shit. And I, so I go, I go, you know what? Sure. Sounds great. And I, I signed it. And uh, we walked out and she was all proud that we had the keys to the house and stuff. And on the steps of the courthouse, I told, I looked over and I said, hey, I said, there's a countdown right now of uh, when we get kicked out of this house because I'm not paying one dime. If they're going to screw me at the end, I ain't paying one dime towards it. We're going to live there for like six, eight months for free until they have to kick us out. That's one of my favorite truck <laughs> stories of all time. You bought a Welcome. house and never made a payment. Yeah, and I, when I, I realized I had it all in, in real time. I was, like, I was like, that's not right. That's not right. <laughs> that right there, they're screwing us here. I don't even understand all this shit. I was like, you know what? Sign it. Fuck it. Who gives a shit? That's yeah, a, so that's a free place to live for eight months. You knew there was a housing bubble right then. We should yeah. we should have checked it. We should have yeah. cashed in on that. We could have been on the front lines of it. If you see me being approved for a loan, you know something fucking crazy is going on. That's the plot of the Big Short. <laughs> like, the Big Short, the movie. He goes down to Florida and he, and he's pulling up in the, all these mansions, and it's like a guy working the hot dog right. stand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you live here. You're like, yeah, man. You work for Walmart so your whole life. You're just <laughs> checking people out at Walmart. And you got this out. Yeah, dude, they were doing the Oprah thing. You get a mansion, you get a mansion, you get a house. God, man. Yeah, we should have, man. We missed our our opportunity there. Jeez, buddy. But I mean, if we didn't even know how to buy a house, I doubt we know how to (laughs) find how to buy a house. Find the metrics of shorting the housing market. I knew how to buy a house. You uh, you find some shady bitch that you married, and she just just fucking knows how to just somehow get her hands on shit, and then you just sign a paper and walk out. That's what I did. <laughs> I, didn't pay, I didn't pay one dime for a uh, down payment, nothing. Probably didn't affect their credit at all, right? Oh, it was a little bit. Uh, it was a little. It got, it got a little dinged up for a while. <laughs> 
I, I, I lived in a house, a great house, beautiful house, for like nine months, and I didn't pay one dime for it ever. <laughs> yeah. We should do that again. They think they're going to screw me. I screwed them. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if I can do that. If it, yeah. If there's ever a, a housing crisis you can smell coming up, let yeah. me know. <laughs> yeah. We'll it's a good year. Of it. That was all right. Everybody's trying to take advantage of it the other way, but we're like, no, free houses. Sure, Come to us. Hell, all you got to do is file bankruptcy later on, and you're fine. <laughs> Surely we could find a bubble somewhere else. There's got to be some kind of bubble. Yeah. Boy, there was a crypto bubble in that burst. Oh, my God. It'll Man, come I, back, though. I run, I run, you bet you. You don't think? You, uh, uh, no, I mean, if you buy Bitcoin, you're fine. Right. right. Yeah, you're fine. Shit. Just do that, and you're fine. It's like I always at the time I was telling you guys it's just like the uh, dot com bubble from the early whatever early two thousands. Everybody's making so much money, uh, ass Jeeves and all this shit. But at the end of the yeah. day, you only wanted like Google and shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. don't be ass- holding uh, fucking uh, yeah Popeye coin or whatever the fuck you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't do that shit. It's dumb. <laughs> yeah, that was a good time though. Oh, it was. <laughs> This is the Barn Radio Show. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to the Barn Radio Show live from the Barn Studios, courtesy of Dirt Road FM. Hear us every Wednesday or sometimes Wednesday mornings with replays on Saturdays on our social media, YouTube channels. I got so we're talking a little bit of like phenomenons like, um, you know, psychology, I guess, Mm -hmm. with with the like recency bias. You see all these yellow cars because you're thinking about yellow cars. I got a question for you. And I think I've been guilty of this. So I get off work at like 4.30 today, and I had some things that I needed to deposit in the bank, okay. right? Bank closes at 5, mm-hmm. and I'm a little few miles away. So I'm kind of trying to hurry to get to the bank before it closes to deposit a few things. Well, when I get there, there's three lanes. Yeah. On my far left lane, there are six cars in line. Middle lane, three cars. Yeah. Right lane, one car. Right, so I could either be the seventh car in line Ooh. in that lane, or the fourth in the middle lane, or the second in the third lane. What the hell were the fifth and the third car thing? Like, why would they get? So I think I've been guilty of this too, because when I pulled up, I was like, "Well, why isn't anybody going in that lane?" Yeah, you know, because I see the other six cars in the other one, or at least five. Right, right. the one's getting served. Yeah, but I see the other five cars. I'm like, "Well, why didn't they go in that lane?" So my mind automatically goes, well, something's wrong. There's They're something closing wrong. the lane down or or right. it's the car's broke down or something. Surely another American's not a moron. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, we're all smart. So. so I think that's what happened. I think some of those other cars that had the opportunity to go to the quick lane yeah. didn't because they were like, well, nobody else is doing it. Right. And I think it's sort of a psychological, sociological kind of thing of like, well, something must obviously be wrong because nobody else is doing it. Well, okay, so I, that was where I come in. That's me. I'm the dude that's like, what the fuck? Are you, I'm doing it. I don't care. Like, <laughs> like I don't. I know. I don't think of shit like. Man, I wonder if this. I, I see open. I go. What's <laughs> fucking wrong with you guys? <laughs> yeah. And then so, people fall. They just start lining behind me. <laughs> so that's what I did. Yeah. There you go. That's what I did. Absolutely. And I, I was done before they even moved one car. Yeah. So there's still somebody that's six cars back and I am done. I am pulling out. It was such a it was such a crazy thing that I experienced. I made it a point to look back to see. <laughs> what, what are they doing? It went so fast. I wonder if the fifth car now pulls over to where you were. That that's a smart guy. Right, right. If I bet well, he didn't. Well that guy did it. Yeah. I bet he didn't. I, really? I don't know. Do you think he did? Uh, probably. <laughs> I would hope so. Because I, I mean, my thinking is, because like I said, for a split second, I was like, well, what's wrong with this lane? So nobody got behind you, though, when you were there? Nobody. That's weird, man. Nobody. That's weird. I. <laughs> but I got through quick, man. One place that screws me up is McDonald's. They got the two things now, that like the yes. two drive throughs And yes. so I get pissed. Oh, I get so pissed when somebody goes around everybody and goes to the outside one. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. That ain't the way this shit works, bud. Like, we're all in line, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go left to right, you know. But uh, but then I can be behind people, and they're just all in the left. I'm like, what are you guys doing? Now, so, wait. I, so I pull, I pull, like, I went wedge out, wedge out so nobody can go around. Like, I, either this motherfucker's going next time, or I'm going. So I, I'm glad you bring that up, because yeah. I might be the guy that you're talking about. I don't know what the rules are. What are the rules? You just go the short one, short line, I think. So yeah. if you pull up. You go to the short line. Yeah. Well, if there's a, if there's a like a line of cars, I mean you're at the end. But when you get to the two, you go to the short one. 
So whoever's in line gets to pick which. That's which what one. I would think. Instead of uh, instead of being a dick, like from way back. Now the one in Farmington has uh, the one closer to us has the cones that come a little further out. You may make yeah make your decision a little further out. All right. But uh, I'm, I'm I would think that's how it goes. Okay. Or do you think that you're in, if you if everybody they're waiting then they're in the mid, they're in the inside lane? I really don't. I don't know I don't what's know. going on. I don't, I don't either, know. man. And I think I've been guilty of being the the dickhead in that in that case because I look at everybody like, why are they all in that line? But they might be waiting on either one. But I don't I don't know if I've ever seen somebody like waiting to pick a line. It seems like they always pick the line. No, yeah, yeah. Well, you might be right, and I'll tell you why. Because every time I do this, I think, man, what a dick. What, blah, and I will go. That person will go through. And then the next person will come around and go through, and I'm like, wait a minute, what the hell? This person in front of me never pops over to the right where he should be. They just stay there. So maybe they're not a dick. Like maybe these people are just morons. Man, McDonald's, if you're listening, we could need, we could use some clarification on the rules. Just, hey, we need some rules on this. Yeah, just put a little thing of rules, just a, just a board out there, man. Come on. We just love we love knowing what to do. I always think back. Might be a sensitive subject, especially on this airwaves, but uh, the capital. When they stormed the right, Capitol, right, yeah. or what's the best way to say it? When they insurrected uh, the Capitol. Yeah, when they, when they, I don't know how you do it without offending everybody. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, they stormed the Capitol, right? Yeah, absolutely. It was an insurrection 1,000%, yes. So there's <laughs> like all this violence and chaos going on, and I was watching it live. I got a notification on Twitter or was checking something, and they're like, they're in the Capitol building. I'm like, who's in the Capitol building? Yeah, I'm like, building? what? Like, hey, where's the security at, right? Right. So uh, so I was watching it live, kind of all unfold live like a lot of people were. There was just mass chaos to get inside, whatever that looked like, whatever that was, whatever you want to call it. Once they got inside, they were all following the velvet ropes. Yes. <laughs> Do you remember seeing yeah, they that? Yeah, they were like, yeah, they wanted to, I mean, that, this could be crazy, but not too crazy. <laughs> yeah. not, 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 not too crazy. It's funny what, what? some people rules... Yeah, the rules they follow and don't. It's what? Yeah, what? Uh, yeah, the, the rules they choose to follow. Like we can storm through the security, we yeah. can break out windows and kick down windows and do all that. But like you go into the in the bathroom and you just break the break the fucking urinals and just chaos. Just fuck this place. Kick open this. Uh, 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 pull out the sinks. All shit. But then you wash your hands and shit when you're about to leave. <laughs> you make sure you everything's <laughs> didn't walk out. It's, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what. You remember seeing that though? Yes, like where they were like we were following down the hallways yes. and the velvet ropes. Like, I'm pretty sure you have some felonies out there. Yeah. Like, we can do some misdemeanors in here. Fuck it, you're yeah. Just you've already made this decision. Just yeah. go, man. And those velvet ropes are like suggestions, anyway. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're not gonna go. Oh, well, you broke in the Capitol, and you, you know uh, that's a huge deal. <laughs> but, but, but but the ropes. Now we're gonna <laughs> we're scoring here. I'm gonna take some points off for that. Jesus, man. man. Yeah, my favorite was the, the chick. She's like, uh, she's all crying. Like she got her ass kicked, and she's all crying. She's like, <laughs> we just want to go inside. <laughs> that, you don't do that. Then sign up for the tour. Yes. <laughs> take the fucking tour. What are you thinking? Good lord. Oh, that video is so funny. Oh my god, I was dying. He's like, we just wanted to start a bunch of violence, <laughs> yeah. and they got mad at that. <laughs> we just wanted to wage war on America. <laughs> <laughs> what my problem was? <laughs> oh god, that video is classic. Jesus, oh America. Yeah, it's like a psychological thing. We're, we get in those, and it's just we we love things to be clear cut. We love boundaries. <clears throat> yeah. I think McDonald's needs some velvet ropes. Yeah, that they do. They do. That they solve a lot of problems. Solve a lot. Yes. I'm sure I've made some people mad before, but I just don't know. I would follow the rules if I knew the rules. That, yeah, like I say, I'll, I'll sit there and call this guy a dick, but then the guy leaves and nobody pops over there. And I'm like, he's, so he's my, not maybe not being be. a dick. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Yeah. So say you are, say there's one car in left lane, one car in the right lane, and you're the next car. Yeah. Do you ever over... I get, I'm so guilty of this. Overthink which one you think is going to be the quickest one. And I'm wrong every time. I'm wrong <laughs> every time. I don't understand how I'm wrong every time. It's something. I will go in the, Wal in the lines at Walmart and I'm counting every every person and every fucking piece of uh, thing they have in their <laughs> yeah. cart. And I'm like, okay. And I, I know that cashier, she's all, she's slow as shit. <laughs> yeah. and I've got it it's all a figured full, out. Full assessment. You check the cart. Yeah. You, yeah those are going to take a while. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, those are food stamp things. Those are gonna have to take. Or, uh, I mean, uh, Wick things. Those are gonna have to. She had to rip uh, a yeah. separate thing for yeah. Wick and all that. You're gonna have to weigh I that. It all figured out. Weigh that ham. And then all of a sudden, old Gertrude over here fucking turns into lightning quick <laughs> cashier or something. And I'm I, I'm wrong every single time. It's unreal. Well, I, I do it in McDonald's because they always say, like, if I am that third guy pulling up, they always say, you know, NASCAR rules. You want to take the inside lane. That's gonna get you there the quickest. Yeah. But sometimes that outside lane goes faster. And then sometimes if I see one pull up after, yeah. I'm like, okay, well, this guy's getting ready to check out. You know what I mean? This right. guy's getting ready to, to be done and move forward. Yeah. But it's a whole process. Like you said, a whole assessment of the whole situation to just try to get my burger a few minutes before. Right, yeah. It's, it, uh, and like at Walmart, I, I have it all mapped out and shit. I'm, I'm, do it. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I got it. I got it. And I'm moving too. I'm moving, baby. It's working out perfectly to plan and then somebody uh this doesn't have a a barcode i'm like god damn (laughs) (laughs) nothing i I knew i should have went over there jesus yes (laughs) every time something like that happens have you ever uh had to like like visit somebody in the hospital and like eat at the cafeteria oh yeah one of my daughters was in the cafeteria was in the hospital for a little bit so we we had a lot of cafeteria visits for the hospital and the children's hospital by the way excellent cafeteria yeah well so i go down there and there's a salad bar and i'm like well shit yeah give me give me some of that there's a lot of different options but one is a salad bar so i just start putting all this stuff on and i go up to pay for my salad thinking it's you know six bucks or whatever well they she said uh put it on the way on the oh no on the scale there and this thing is mounded over because I'm oh, thinking no. it's a, just one price. You know, yeah. I'm going to get as much as I can. I'm throwing yeah. all the meat on there, all the cheese. Oh, shit. It's hardly a salad. Oh, no. It's more of like a meat thing <laughs> with some <laughs> lettuce in there and some cheese. And so then I'm embarrassed to like, this is going to break the record yeah. <laughs> for the for the weight of a salad. Put it on there. It was a $9 salad. Oh, my God. <laughs> when I think most of them are like four. That Okay, that brings me to this. I don't know how to not spend fifteen dollars on myself at Taco Bell. I, I don't understand what's going on. Yeah. Every time I, I'm, I don't even look at the damn thing. I'm like, I want that combo, and somehow it's like seven ninety nine, and it's like <laughs> they should go fourteen seventy. I'm like, yeah, that's right. I don't know how. Yeah. Uh, I don't understand how to just have them, but okay. I've spent thirty dollars before. Yeah, like Arby's. Yes. Oh yeah. Because I'll see a sandwich and I'm like, man, that looks good, and I don't even really look at the price because like, how much are you gonna spend? I'm like, yeah, give me that roast beef, whatever. <laughs> That yeah. looks kind of good too. Give me one of those, and you know I don't get meals because I don't like the soda or whatever. And a lot of times I don't like the fry, so I just want the meat. Yeah. So yeah, give me that sandwich. Give me that, and then you pull up. It's like thirty two bucks, and like <laughs> some of fucking sandwiches are like eight ninety nine for one sandwich. Like <laughs> they hand it to you, like here's for you and your family. And yeah. Like, There's no family in yeah. here. It's just me, just me, lady. Jesus, man, the price prices of everything is just ridiculous now, man. Ridiculous. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's the Barn Radio Show live from the Barn Studios. Catch us on all the social medias. We are courtesy of Dirt Road FM and BetterHelp.com forward slash The Barn. You can hear us every Wednesday morning and replays replay on our YouTube channel. Be sure to follow, like, subscribe to uh, Dirt Road FM and The Barn, The Barn Media Group. And we will catch you guys next time. Chuck, we'll see you soon, bud. Hey, buddy. All right. Yep, I'm here. Hey.